Hare Krishna. Welcome all of you to this discussion on yoga and emotional health. I'll talk this in three broad parts. I'll talk about what is yoga, what is emotional health, and how you can, yoga can enhance emotional health. So, what is yoga? The word yoga is often associated with physical postures. They are one part of one type of yoga. Etymologically, the word yoga comes from the word yuj, which means to connect. So that connection is not simply like an electrical connection where we put a socket into a, a plug into a socket. It is more like a connection that harmonizes. So yoga can be said to be a state of connection or harmony. Now, what is this harmony of? It is the harmony of our entire being with the purpose of our being. Our being, our existence has three aspects to it. The body, the mind and the spirit. And when all these three are harmonized and channeled for pursuing a meaningful purpose, then that is essence, the essence of yoga. So at this, in this state of yoga, everything disruptive that is there within us gets calmed and cleansed. So this is the basic conception of definition of yoga. Now, what do we mean by emotional health? If we consider what is physical health, physical health is when our body is functional and fit. So that, similarly, when our emotions are functional and fit. So when our emotions stimulate and sustain a state of sense of wellness and fullness. When we have emotions such as gratitude, cheerfulness, positive optimism, these are emotions that that further our health so conversely what is emotional sickness emotions that create and perpetuate a state of a state of disease you know, lack of comfort or pleasure that is what we would call as emotional sickness so for all of us there is both uh, there are, you can have emotions that make us unhealthy. What could be that kind of emotions? Loneliness, depression, anger, anxiety, distractedness. These are all emotions which would make us unhealthy. And the emotional sickness can transmogrify further into physical sickness also, where people can have psych psychosomatic diseases, or sometimes uh, some people can even become suicidal where they're not just uh, their body is not just becoming sick but the body can be destroyed because of uh, because of emotional sickness so now if you understand yoga and emotional health now let's consider a little bit further to go into the yogic model of health so when we are emotionally sick what happens we can make ourselves physically sick too. So the yogic model of the self, if you want to understand broadly, the, there are three aspects to our being. There is the body, the mind and the spirit of the soul. So if we compare this with a computer system, in the computer system, there's the hardware, the software and the user. So the body is the hardware, the mind, the software and the soul is the user. So if we consider these three, now, just like if the hardware is damaged, we can't use a, use a laptop. But similarly, if the software is corrupted, we can't use the laptop. So usually, nowadays people practice yoga for physical fitness and form. That's good. But yoga, can, yoga if understood holistically, can also promote emotional well-being. So emotional sickness in the metaphor of the computer is like a virus in the software of the mind. So our mind is the seat of emotions. The mind is like the software and a computer might look brand new and might even be new. But if it is corrupted by a software 
if it is corrupted by a virus, then it won't function at all. So similarly, people might be physically healthy and handsome and powerful. And yet, if they're emotionally sick, they will be miserable. So it's like a virus. Now, now how do we get infected by this virus? What causes emotional sickness in terms, in this, in terms of this metaphor? Broadly, there are two things. There's physical obsession and there is spiritual disconnection. So basically the mind exists between the body and the spirit. So the, when the mind gets infected, it can come from below, from the physical level, or it can come because of a lack of anchoring above. So let's see, look at this better. Physical obsession means that when we get infatuated with trivial and transient things, that infatuation creates a sense of uh, imbalance. So for example, this could be craving or addiction. Now, when we are craving for something, Kangshati is a Sanskrit word in the yoga texts, it is a state of restlessness, it's a state of uh, unhappiness. And when this craving becomes compulsive, then it becomes addiction. Now, addiction can sometimes have physical symptoms, but addiction is primarily uh, emotional sickness. And usually the addiction results because we are caught. We are obsessed with something at the physical level. We are completely consumed by uh, attachment, obsession with something physical. And that this is, does it allow us to think about anything else? That's physical obsession. And similarly, there is spiritual disconnection. Now, what do we mean by spiritual disconnection? The word spirit has two meanings. One is the spiritual level of reality. Spirit also refers to the energy. So for example, after if in a cricket match, a particular a top batsman is uh, gets out, and the whole team loses their spirit. They lose the sense of energy, a sense of, sense of purpose. So we get spiritually disconnected when we lose energy. And actually our energy comes when we have a sense of purpose and meaning in our lives. If we, if we don't have this, then we just become like a boat in a, a boat in a stormy ocean, stormy sea. It gets swept here, there and everywhere by any stray wind. So our purpose is what gives us direction. So when we are spiritually disconnected, then we get overwhelmed by negative emotions. How does that happen? Because consider distraction. When do we get distracted? If we are committed to nothing, then we'll get distracted by anything. If we have no sense of meaning and purpose, then we might just start surfing the net and it's just, we might start with few minutes, but we might spend several hours or several days doing random surfing on the net. So lack of higher purpose and meaning are what result when we are unable to balance ourselves properly. So this is spiritual disconnection. Now, how can yoga enhance our emotional health? That's broadly three things, physical regulation, intellectual conviction, and devotional connection. Let's try to understand this. As we mentioned that the mind becomes infected either because of something wrong coming in from below or something wrong because of a lack of connection above. So let's see how this can be rectified and how yoga, yoga practice as is explained in the Bhagavad Gita includes aspects by which each one of us can become regulated, can become regulated and can become emotionally healthy. So what does physical regulation mean? It basically means the greater the structure in our life, the lesser the rupture the mind can cause in our life. How does this work? So suppose we start surfing something on the net. Now, if we have some structure to our life, that means say after half an hour, we have to meet this person or we have to do this chore or we have to get that task done. 
and we know it's obligatory then okay i have to do that so even if we get distracted we'll get distracted for say half an hour but after that we will ar arise and we'll start functioning so similarly for us to the extent we have structure in our life to that extent the rupture becomes less the mind doesn't get that much focus so we can't always get rid of temptation we can't always get rid of loneliness but if we create a schedule for ourselves okay this is what i'm going to do this is what i'm going to do this is what i'm going to do now the extent of the schedule that we have can vary from person to person some people can work best with a very clearly defined schedule some people can work well with a little broader schedule little more flexible schedule that we can find out that customization we can do for ourselves but the key thing is we need a structure for our life so physical regulation means we try to have a fixed time for eating food a fixed time for sleeping fixed time for doing routine activities then the mind doesn't get too much agitated because of these routine things and these routine things also prevent us from getting too agitated by the mind because we know i have to do certain things so even if the mind distracts we come back just like a simple example to understand this would be say a student has an exam after 6 months and a student has an exam after 6 hours then after 6 hours means a student would immediately if they get distracted let's look what is there on facebook no not now i have to study but after 6 months yeah sure let me look on facebook so when there is something to do and something urgently to do then what happens that creates a sense of deterrence for our minds sickness to escalate so these germs just oh i am feeling so sorry for myself i am feeling resentful i am feeling lonely okay but i have to do things and the more we start getting engaged in things purposefully productively then we get out of our mind and thus we free uh, we minimize the emotional sickness that is likely to infect us so the bhagavad gita recommends such physical regulation in 617 yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta sapna avabodhasya yogo bhavati dukkha ha so yukta is connected or regulated so when we are regulated ahara viharasya in our eating in our sleeping cheshtasya karmasu in our working in our endeavoring yukta sapna avabodhasya in our sleeping so what happens by this is we can yogo bhavati dukkha ha dukkha is distress ha is removal so our distress can be removed when we can be regulated so the regulation now what is the distress that can be removed uh, largely it refers to the emotional distresses that come when our life is unregulated and we live mostly at the mercy of our merciless mind our mind the bhagavad gita says can often be our enemy and when we just say if we open our whole full treasury for the enemy then it will plunder all of it so if we keep our schedule completely free then our random our mind can plunder our days and weeks and entire lifetimes for entire lifetime for us so regulation is the first step and such a regulation is intrinsic to the process of yoga so yoga generally involves certain levels of discipline and when we practice these disciplines we will find that just by creating a schedule if even if we can't do anything else let's wake up at a fixed time preferably early in the morning before sunrise where that atmosphere is very fresh wake up at a fixed time for that we sleep at a fixed time yes. it's very difficult to bring about huge behavioral changes quickly or especially huge emotional changes quickly but there are small small things we can do and these small small things will accumulate and have a significantly positive effect the second is intellectual conviction so now the intelligence is what can regulate the mind so study of spiritual texts like the bhagavad gita what does it do it makes our intelligence steady and sturdy steady and sturdy our mind will be unsteady our mind will say let's do this let's do that 
let's watch this let's eat that but if our intelligence is steady then we won't get tossed here and there by the mind we'll be able better situated so steadiness refers to a certain level of um, one pointed focus and sturdiness refers to the the strength to not get shaken so both of these will come when we nourish our intelligence by studying wisdom texts and swadhyay or study of scripture is an integral part of the practice of yoga now we could start with whatever is possible for us even if we spend a few minutes every day bathing in the spiritual wisdom of yoga texts we will find that these will act as reminders and reorienters for us so what will happen when we study this it is not just that we will get a lot of information yes we will learn a lot of new things but most importantly such texts help us to focus on life's bigger purposes we can get caught in trivial pleasures but the study of wisdom texts reminds us reorients us why this is what really matters this is what is important for me so such a reminder such a reorienter is extremely helpful and regular scriptural study even if we just do it for a short amount of time a few minutes daily if we just start doing it as a habit we will find it's almost mystical how our mind will become calmer how at the right time when we are feeling tempted or threatened when negative emotions that start sickening us start will start emerging up within us we will immediately remember to refocus so and that refocus will save us so intellectual conviction is what comes and st stabilizes our mind when we practice yoga specifically the yogic limb of swadhyay of study of scripture and the bhagavad gita recommends that steadiness of the mind comes through strengthening the intelligence shanai shanai ruparamed buddhya dhriti gruhi itaya atma samstham manah kritva na kinchit api chintayet so buddhya dhriti gruhi itaya with intelligence sustained by conviction what will happen when the intelligence is sustained by conviction then atma samstham manah kritva the mind we can focus on the self and the mind wanders na kinchit api chintayet we bring it back we refocus it shanai shanai gradually it may not happen overnight but it will happen slowly and surely and the last is devotional purification devotional purification what does it mean that yoga ultimately connects us with the whole the whole whose parts we are with the divine who sparks we are mamai mam sho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana we are all parts of the divine there is a spark of the divine within each one of us and when we connect with the divine devotion what does it do it involves two things basically our inner connection with the divine and our outer contribution in a mood of service to the divine so these two things connection and contribution they animate both aspects of our life internal and external and thus the impure the unhealthy emotions within us get cleansed by that inner connection and we become a channel for the wisdom and compa the compassion of the divine to manifest through us we start finding ourselves becoming purified and empowered by the in, by the invocation of the presence of the divine within us just as when there is darkness it's very difficult to drive out the darkness but we turn on the light when the darkness goes away similarly there are many dark dreary draining emotions within us which all contribute to the deterioration of our emotional health but when we invoke the presence of the divine through the practice of yoga especially the practice of 
sharanagati of surrender of devotional offering of ourselves to the divine then what happens by that is we become a channel for the divine we become instruments of the divine so we'll find energy and creativity and clarity streaming into us from a higher source and enriching and empowering us this enrichment and empowerment can dramatically transform our life this devotional purification happens through all or various practices of yoga and this is the stress the central point the pivot of the practice of yoga called as bhakti yoga herein we practice yoga for connecting with the divine and we focus on using the same emotions that sometimes agitate us distract us delude us degrade us we use those same emotions and the energy from those emotions to direct our consciousness our heart toward the divine and when we thus become a channel as our consciousness goes upward toward the divine then wisdom and compassion flow from the divine wisdom enables us to choose wisely and compassion enables us to act in a way that is beneficial for others and beneficial for ourselves we interact with the world broadly in two ways we take in information from the world and then we act into the world so wisdom enables us to process the information in the world, the coming in from the world judiciously and compassion enables us to act in the world with with kindness with sensitivity with a heart that longs to help through this inner connection with the divine the unhealthy emotions start getting cleansed away and as we start making an outer contribution as we start seeing that our existence and our endeavors can make a positive difference in the lives of others then our emotional sickness starts disappearing completely when we start acting in a mood of service whenever we face a problem instead of asking um, why is this happening to me instead of that we change the question not why is this happening to me but what can i do about it a heart that is filled with impurity focuses on resentfulness why is this problem coming in my life a heart that has become purified that has been cleansed of unhealthy emotions that sees oh, what can i do about it not why is this happening to me but how can i serve how can i be a part of the change and we all can play small or great parts in making a positive change and that purification of the heart that happens through devotion which is a part of the yoga of bhakti that is remarkably empowering and this bring this is what the bhagavad gita recommends such inner purification prashanta manasam yenam yoginam sukham uttamam upaiti shant rajasam brahma bhutam kalmasham a kalmasham the impurities within our hearts go away and shant we experience peace how do we experience this peace because the agitations the infatuations within us shant or just some they go away and that's this purification akalmasham can is the foundation of steady spiritual health we we'll conclude with uh, the yogic circle of wellness what we are is the divine's gift to us what we become is our gift to the divine that means that rather than simply looking at our situation and thinking what is wrong and what is right we see that whatever is happening in our life is a part of a higher plan our life has meaning it has purpose and for pursuing that meaning and purpose whatever we need is provided for us whatever we what we are what we have this is the divine's gift to us 
and if we use this gift in a mood of service in a mood of contribution not only will we be able to make a change externally but more importantly we will be able to make a change internally we through every endeavor that we make to act in a mood of service and contribution we will find that that cleanses and purifies us internally strengthens us internally sublimates us internally so even if the external positive change doesn't manifest we will soon realize by the practice of yoga that even if we can't change things externally we can change our thoughts internally and for our happiness the things outside don't matter as much as the thoughts inside by the practice of yoga when we act in a mood of service seeing whatever we have as a gift from the divine and trying to offer ourselves in a mood of service we'll find that our heart will become enriched by the presence of the divine by the presence of positive pure emotions coming from the connection with the divine and they will enrich and enliven us and thus our being will manifest the yogic circle of wellness grace coming from the divine and service manifesting to us through us to the world and to the divine thus in offering ourselves in a mood of service to the divine we all can experience wellness and fullness that is the summit of emotional health so to summarize i discussed today about how yoga and spiritual emotional health are related so i talked about what is yoga it is connection or harmony harmonization of our body mind and spirit in a mood of uh, in in the pursuit of a higher purpose then emotional health is when the emotions that trigger a sense of wellness and fullness are stimulated and sustained within us emotional sickness is when the opposite emotions emotions that create and perpetuate a sense of disease unease lack of wellness so there can those emotions can be loneliness distractedness anger annoyance resentfulness anxiety and what 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 causes these emotions discuss the yogic model of the self body mind and soul are like the hardware software and user so emotional sickness is like Uh, virus is corrupting the software of the mind and that is caused either because of physical obsession or because of spiritual disconnection when we get too caught with worldly things as in craving or addiction or when we lack a sense of meaning and purpose in our lives and how can yoga practice restore emotional health it's got three things first is by the practice of by physical regulation the greater the structure in our life the lesser the rupture the mind can cause then by intellectual conviction our study of spiritual texts can make our intelligence steady and sturdy and thus help us drive out unhealthy emotions and then devotional connection and what does that do inner connection outer contribution so by that just like light turns on and darkness goes out well, the presence of the illuminating divine within us drives out the dark dreary draining emotions from our heart and when we act externally in a mood of service to the divine we become instruments of divine compassion wisdom and compassion and even if we are not able to change things externally we will change our thoughts internally and that will create a healthier and richer life for us within what we are is the divine's gift to us what we become is our gift to the divine in this yogic cir- circle of wellness when we complete this yogic circle of wellness we find the ultimate well happiness thank you